All right, so you want to see some openings. I guess we'll try to play some openings. I mean, write your local Twitch congressperson. Okay, we've already deviated from the opening book. Huh. All right. I'm feeling it. We have doubly deviated from what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to take this pawn first, and it gets really messy and complicated. It's a gambit. Instead, this is a different gambit, and uh, this is basically unknown to theory. So, that's cool. But as long as you just develop all the pieces, how bad can it be, right? Um, developing all the pieces is not going to be easy exercise here, because... My opponent can construct numerous threats, but it should be doable. They're going to want to open the position as quickly as possible before I can get my pieces developed. But I think I'm okay, just by a hair. If I were playing in a tournament over the board, certainly I would not play this way, because um, it's extremely dubious. And just barely holding on. Um, but uh, for an online game, this is the fun way to play. When I've got an audience. Um, so do you have any opening in mind? Like, here obviously I'm just making stuff up. But um, and I'm probably going to get punished pretty speedily for that. So I'm debating, do I just push my center pawn before it's too late? Uh, it's not a bad idea. Let's do that. We need to get all our pieces out, and for that to happen, this bishop has to develop. And for that to happen, um, this pawn had to move out of the way. So I'm admitting to having the worst position out of this opening, and trying to exploit the fact that their knight is still developing. They did double my pawns. Really, this is not the greatest pawn structure deficiency ever. Um, so there's a check. Note that this protects the rook. So if I try a trick with like my rook pinning the knight, they just take my bishop, and I don't win a piece. But, um, I can still develop both of my rooks with tempo. I've survived the opening, and now we get to play an endgame. Again, I have the worst side of the... Well, I have the bishop pair. This is not too terrible. My king is going to be harassed for a little bit. I'm probably going to lose a pawn or two. But I can still all use all of my pieces, and that's what matters here. Ah, you're going to learn the scotch opening, but yeah, that's a nice, simple opening. Um, where you just drink a glass of scotch and... no. Um, Alright, so yeah, I'm okay giving up this pawn, but um, my king wants shelter, and where am I going to find shelter? I have to pick left or right. I'm going left. Which goes square into a fork. And this is a predictable move. Um, I'm not sure that it's actually best. Because it expands my attacking possibilities. Um, Bogyoku's not quite a thing in chess. We can wish. Uh, did have a high school teacher who regularly got his king exposed like this. And we kind of made fun of him for always having a king in danger. Um, okay, I'm going to develop my rook this way. 
not because I'm greedy, but because it's actually the fastest way to develop the rook while finding a shelter for my king. It's not about the material, it's about me trying to get my pieces out. Alright, so now... oh shit. <laughs> um, it's fine. I don't want to put my king in the corner. So I have a decent chance of drawing this, as long as my king doesn't get too far away from this point. Um, as long as I can make my king back there in time, I should be okay. Boop. All right, so now my king starts his journey. Um, as a rule, you generally want your pieces behind, or on the opponent's side of the board, you want your bishop. Because it operates most effectively behind enemy lines. Um, okay, we're going to bring this... Oh, they have the correct color of bishop for this corner. So this could have some theoretical interest. Um, maybe. So, we're going to threaten to threaten this. Okay, yes, this is a very good block. Um, this is still an equally good defense. I think this holds without too much trouble. Um, so I have a fortress on this square. There's nothing they can do to break the fortress. Um, we're going to threaten to go back here. Uh, he actually allows me to go there, which is super strange. Although, I don't think it changes anything. All right. So bishops of opposite color is recognized pretty generally as being drawish. So that's why I've not panicked too much just yet. They've actually trapped their bishop. Um... Okay. Got a draw. Um, actually against, yeah, pretty decently strong player. Good game, well played. Uh, I found there's a user preference to automatically say this on a draw or a win. I'm sorry, on a draw or a loss. It automatically says that. Um, which is pretty cool. Yeah, that was a solid defense on my part. So we wanted a scotch. We could try to play a scotch, depending what the opponent does. Okay. No scotch for me. But guess what? We get to play the Bowden Kazirtsky Gambit. <laughs> uh, uh, this is not a thing. 
Uh, my brain just broke. So, my brain is so broken looking at this. I guess this transposes to another opening. Um, so this is legitimately a, a oh right. There's still this opening too. Um, the point is they get to choose the way in which they recapture here. Um, I'm just gonna BS my way through it, which is not how you're supposed to play chess openings. But here we are doing it, calling their bluff. It wasn't a bluff. But yeah, this is a decent position, but not a good one. Uh, I'm sorry, it's playable, but um, not favorable. So I'm afraid that if I castle, they just throw this at me. So I've done something about that now. And now we castle that this square is covered. And this pawn is a thorn, like, it prevents their bishop from moving. If they push this, it blocks the other bishop. So they might hesitate to push, but they did it anyway, as since it's a good move. Uh, it's just something they'd hesitate to play. But they don't have anything better to do, so... Um, meanwhile, I want to use all of my pieces. Um... So let's get the rook on an open file and forget that this is a thing. Yep. All right. I saw that after I moved. Do I get partial credit? All right. So I've trapped my bishop accident. What? Oh, clever. Not clever enough. Check. <laughs> yep. This opponent was moving very quickly the entire game, so I got confident. Um, Alright, I kind of knew. Um, I could still be screwed here, by the way. It's not easy. But, yeah, that's a fun little tactic. Oh, they've discovered attack on my queen now. That's pretty cute. Um... Right, let's put my queen on a good square. Yeah, when players take like half a second for every move, that's when they make mistakes. Um, so like here, um, it's kind of, I mean, I've covered these squares. So their queen could go here to offer an exchange, but more likely um, it's just going to go right there, and I'm just going to go checkmate them. Um, that's the plan. Because a queen is not very effective in the corner. All right, I'm going to go back, not threatening anything at all. No siree. Why would I be threatening anything? Definitely don't have any sort of attack planned here. Definitely not about to just win the game. Um, So, some degree of precision is required here. So, here's the idea. But I'm playing this first because here's the other idea. 
and this piece is not doing anything. Hey, look, guess where the rook moved, guys? We got a two attacky. <laughs> and if they go here, we just pile on. I'm sorry, or we just checkmate. All right, we have defeated Kiss Me Baby. Um, yeah, decent player. Good game. Oh, I'm still showing my 81 Dojo badge. Oh, let's hide that. Okay, my player badge is not working. That's fine. Oh, I probably should have analyzed the game. Yeah, my mistake. I had too much fun that game. Yeah, no, I'm like 2,000. Okay, we're going to play... Well... We're going to mess up this opening somehow. If I exchange here, they do either bishop takes or pawn takes, which are both good. Um, so here we've played something similar to a scotch, but it's a Sicilian. Um, the weakness of this knight move is that they can't immediately do bishop g7 to protect it. So regardless what they play, I'm threatening bishop takes knight. Like, unless they attack my queen and then play bishop e7, which would leave a hole on d5 if they do this. Um, so yeah, this is threat number one, and if they play this, I have threat number two. Now, I don't have to take. Um, it could be dangerous to take. Um, but I don't fear anything right now. And the reason it could be dangerous is because, like, this is an idea. Yeah, I would have some chances to win against you. This is true. So I'm hoping for is this check winning the rook. That would be funny. Um... I don't have a checkmate. Like, if I do knight d5, queen h3... Well, I'm fine there, actually. It's just not great. Like, I'm just inviting an attack if I do that. Um, so, more solid is if I sidestep the attack. And if they try to do any shenanigans, I just go over to protect it. I should use arrows to indicate moves and circles to indicate threats. How about that? I'm learning. Um, all right. Um, this pawn move does nothing. It's just giving me a free move. If they push this pawn, then we actually do get this uh, fork. So they're probably not going to push the pawn. Right. So they've dealt with my other knight fork threat. Um. Oh, I see. This pawn move actually prevents queen a4 from just winning. Um. I guess that was a threat. All right, we're going to now use this pawn to clamp this down. They might do queen g4 here, and or maybe not. All right, so now this is locked in place. Um, I'm just going to keep questioning where do they want to put this rook.
we might i did a recent post on lee chess about the rook sandwich where it's trapped between two pawns and without a threat to actually take this pawn okay we're not going to see a rook sandwich this game i was curious though if we would um but no no such luck this game uh, so yeah, let's just put the other piece into play. Try to put all our pieces on active squares and hope that something positive results. They have protected against some of this, so like my queen's not going to win the game outright. Um, but if I use all my pieces, positive things can still happen. So... This rook is blocked by my pawn, so I'm going to try to activate the rook some other way. I guess one idea is this. Um, Alright, their king moves to escape. This bishop is blocked by the pawn. The pawn cannot move. Right, so the king does escape. That is a successful king escape depending how you define success. And now I can just take this for free and start teaming up on that with my queen as well. I need to be a little bit cautious because my opponent is threatening something. Um, so let's throw this into the mix. But yeah, otherwise this is, oops, this is just a free pawn. So they could get this pawn for free, and I'm not so concerned about that pawn. Um, so let's take this. They take here, I take there. They threaten mate, and I, instead of pawn grabbing, will find some way to defend this. Um, here's one. Oh, well, that's complicated. I kind of like it though. Let's see it. If queen takes rook, uh, they get two rooks for the queen. That's not what happened. Also, I'm playing much too slowly. I need to pick up the pace. Um, good observation. All right, you win, my knight. Well done. Uh, so I'm in trouble, but only so much trouble. I'm going to stop the check. Make some threats of my own. Uh, I fucked up. Mm. Well done. Okay, we're going to try to check the checkmate somehow. Nice. Well spotted. Good game. So I did not manage my time because I was explaining everything. Um, so that's how it goes sometimes. Um, yeah, I got... I played a fantastic opening, which is very unlike me. And then I got flashy with the snipe move. Um, like, I could have just played this. It would have been fine. And then they check up and down, and I can move the rook up and down and survive. Um, but yeah, I did doubt, and correctly so, rook takes pawn, because now my knight's overloaded, overworked, trying to defend my king and also participate in the attack. This position's more complicated than I wanted to explain in time pressure. Um, so yeah, I think this... 
when did the decline start here? I think here, honestly. I wanted to show off some tactics to win this. Um, but that was too flashy. Um, Yeah, I'm not seeing a compelling way to crush this. I mean, if they play bishop g7, then their rook is trapped. Um, right now I'm deliberating, is this the right rook move? Or is it better for me to play this and keep this one at home, defending a lot of squares around my king? It might not matter. Yeah, let's just get another game in. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, wow. I'm going to get to play this. This is good fun. This opening messes with a lot of players. So they moved their bishop away, and the bishop was protecting this. Um, so now I just focus all of my pieces on this square. So that's the target. And yeah, like that's legal. But now the queen was defending this pawn. So they've given up the pawn um, without any kind of compensation. Um, I mean, I guess they get a move, a tempo of compensation for the pawn, but generally that's not very much. Yeah, in chess, well, it's there's a lot of similarities. Like, you do want to use all of your pieces. Um, I moved my queen early, which is very unusual. Usually you don't want to commit your queen to one place because it could go to quite a variety of different places. Um, but here I had a strategy. Okay, here I kind of want to move the bishop to hit the knight, but then just move the knight away and my bishop looks weird here. Um, so as I'm trying to explain idiomatic chess, like this bishop's not the greatest, otherwise I'd move knight h5 and just try to chomp it. But I'm going to save that until after they castle. Then I'm going to play knight h5. Um, and then I guess they play bishop h4 or something. Um, I want the bishop pair. Because I'm greedy. Okay, so I waited too long. Gave them an obvious avenue for attack. <sighs> okay, but their king is in the middle of the board. So I should have some way to attack. In fact, I do. Um, do I defend or do I just go for it? It's a hard decision. We're going to defend, which is, again, not the way I usually play. But... Here, like, their bishop is awkward. My knight dominates their knight. My other knight uh, doesn't really dominate this. This knight could move forward, but it doesn't do anything here. Um, well, in fact, it was his knight was protecting the e5 square. So now he's just given that square for free. Um... All right, we're going to proceed with my attacking idea. Pawn takes knight here, bishop here, I don't know what. But I'm attacking. And they haven't castled yet. 
Um, oh, I have an idea. So if the bishop moves here to protect the pawn, I go bishop here. Uh, hitting this stuff. Yep. They still have not castled. So they keep trying to be clever and save a move and threaten one thing and threaten more one more thing. Uh, actually, they are clever. That's pretty good. I have to back away. I forgot this knight protects that square. Um, all right. That sucks. A lot. So yeah, that's the reversal right there. Um, I don't really have any way to continue my attack. I'm going to make room for my queen. They have defended against my queen move. All right. I'm going to go back after uh, this rook. They're a good player. Okay. I'm going to activate my knight, which was horribly misplaced here and would prefer to be in the center of the board. Um, okay, I'll just continue activating it. Oh, in fact, <laughs> well, this is somewhat pleasant. Could be a lot better, but um, yeah, knight here is threatened next. Um, they might do some kind of tricky move here. Yeah, I thought so. Um... Interesting. This game got pretty extreme. I missed tactics. Um, I think it's okay though. Clever. Well done. Well done. And that's why I'm only 2,000-ish. Because I tried too hard to win that. Yeah, good game.
Yeah, that was exciting. Obviously, the thread got away from me, and he played better, so he deserved it. But um, still a good game. All right, we're going to play this again. All right, and then we're equal already. Like, all of Black's op opening problems are solved. Um, like, in theory, at a Grandmaster level, um, Black should be drawing this every time. If not better. Um, so yeah, we've got our bishop outside of this pawn wall. So my heart is... Now we've put, transposed into a Kali reversed. So this is the Kali. Our opponent has made some fatal defect in their pawn structure. Um... meaning they're going to struggle to defend this for the rest of the game. Um, if my attack ever gets off the ground. Okay, I'm going to gambit this pawn. Or at least attempt to find a way to gambit it. Like, I'm intending that if they do this, I don't know if I do bishop takes. I forgot that they'd be attacking my bishop. Oh. Oh, this is interesting. That's a proposal. That is asking for a fight. Um. I want to take their bishop takes knight. My bishop's not doing anything. Um. That's super unwise. Yeah, I need to do the safe thing here. And not let my king get stranded in the center of the board. No matter how tempting it looks. Alright, so... My bishop is on a decent square. Um, the rest of my piece is not at so much. This is the crucial moment where I decide how stuff goes. Um, okay, we're going to prevent castling. They're going to castle the other direction, square into my rook and queen. Um, next, I can do this unless they move their queen back here to protect that, which they do, because they're smart. Um, I was going to move my bishop there anyway, because I'm super paying attention to this. Uh, okay. Yeah, I fucked up pretty hard. So they're just better again. Yep. This is what I get for trying to win games in some sort of style. It's just, I get positions that suck. Alright, see you in Iraq. So, okay, they've done something about my one active piece. Um... Guess we'll find another way to activate it. Might have to offer a queen trade just to get my queen into a square that doesn't suck. All right. Um, Rook takes is tempting. It's the only move to keep my king intact.
Repawn. Oh, not entirely free pawn. Yeah, this has been a fun series of games. I should probably have dinner at some point. So maybe we wrap up after this one. Um, I see Killer Ducky started their stream a while back, so we might head there next. Of course they should play this. And they probably will. And I will suffer for a very long time here. They didn't. Um, yeah. Okay, I need to activate my Rook. This is the super easy way to activate my Rook. Now I threaten to win the game if they're not paying attention. Um... Okay, we're going to stop them from doing the same threat to me. Right, so here... Um, I have some idea what they're doing next. Because it's very similar to what I'm doing. I might have misread something here. No? Accidentally I'm okay. Um... Shit. I fucked up. Yeah, we're gonna wrap it up there. It's not getting any better. Good game. That's why we're only 2,000. Alright. Oh, you want a battle? You really want a battle? You sure? I... I mean, I'm doing 3-2 games. Um, I guess I could open for challenges and let you challenge me, but... Ay, 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 a slow blitz. 5-0, okay, yeah, we can do 5-0. Uh, privacy, let players challenge you always. All right, go for it. Just go to my profile there. Um, and issue a challenge, or however that works. I assume you're familiar with the interface. That could be a faulty assumption. I don't know. You gotta get one win before the stream ends. <laughs> Uh, 
It's funny because it's true. No, I mean, I've ended several streams just losing games, and I'm like, you know what, that's enough, but let's try to win one. All right. Uh, good luck.
Yeah. Good game. All right. Uh, well, that was a challenge, for sure. Um, thanks for the game. Um, yeah, there were some moments in here I was fairly concerned, I think. So, I did pick this super dryish opening line here. And you did correctly exchange. Um, so then I played my knight back to try to make this position complicated. Um, um, I wonder. So this pin, how do I... Yeah, I'm not really sure how to evaluate positions where this exchange happens. Maybe there are some chances, but... In general, it looks pretty even. But now I have three pieces controlling e5. Um, so then I played like this stonewall attack. Although this is like too tempy behind a normal stonewall, where normally I'd want my knight out here already if I'm going to be doing something aggressive. Um, yeah, so you play the ready as white and the Slav. Okay, so yeah, you're familiar with the exchange Slav. To some degree, and you know that like the exchange Slav has a drawish reputation because of the symmetrical pawn structure. There's really no way for either player to force a breakthrough. Um, so yeah, we played an exchange Slav is what happened. Um, but then like so I'm multiple tempi behind playing this into a stone wall. I mean, yes, I am missing the pawn here that would be required for the stone wall, but. I tried to play it the same way. Um, so how did I get the tempi I needed? Um, so I see you moved the bishop back here and then there. Um, possibly you could have just gone back here directly to save one tempo. Um, so that's how I got one tempo. Then we moved the knight forward. Oh, I see. So you're trying to initiate some kind of aggression yeah, I don't know, like, so we've played an exchange Slav, and now you're trying to win in an exchange Slav. It's not so simple to start an attack, and I think you're familiar enough with it, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, to be honest, like, most players play... Well, I'm sorry. Um, yeah. Yeah. So there's obviously more complicated stuff, and I haven't studied it all. Um, there's only so much I do know. Like, um, I've spent put some time into studying this, so I'm able to kind of sort of play this okay. Um, but yeah, this, I mean... There's obviously the transposition to just the main line Slav, and I'm not really so familiar with this. I should know this better. This is kind of why I essay this online, is so I have chances to play opponents who've studied it. Um, right, so yeah, since we did play, we transposed into an exchange Slav, there's really no way either player can break this position open. Um, like, even here, it's going to take numerous moves for me to start some kind of attack, and that attack shouldn't work at all. Um, so, yeah, I know I'm threatening, like, the Stonewall thing, but I don't think it's serious. Um, I think, like, worst comes to worst... Somehow you just put a knight on f1 and camp it out. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, this sort of thing's possible in general. Um, maybe it's not possible anymore. But, yeah, so you cover, like, this square very heavily. You have some threats of doing stuff like this and that. And it's not so easy for me to start an attack while I also have to fend off this threat. So, yeah, I don't know. I wasn't sure how I was going to try to conduct an attack, because I have to constantly worry about the attack just blowing up in my face. Um, 
I guess my plan has to be to activate the c8 bishop. Um, but really the only way I can activate that is by going around the long way here. And by the time my bishop has ended up over here, your knight's not going to be there anymore. So, like, I can't use my pieces effectively. There are no pawn breaks. Um, eventually there was a pawn break. Like, here you're trying to set up both ideas over here and maybe something over here. And I said I'm not interested in allowing you to advance on this side. I'm calling dibs. And you played something aggressive anyway. Um, maybe that was it. I don't know. But yeah, you, you definitely have the bishop pair. Oh. Um, so I guess... Hmm. This makes me wonder. Like, so you're playing the ready, but you're also interested in mating me on h7. Why are we playing the ready? Like, there's other openings out there, especially because this will transpose to d4 openings most of the time anyway. Another possibility, uh, for argument's sake... Uh, is just playing the Kali. Um, like, if you want some aggressive thing where you can just start an attack, the Kali might be an interesting system to try out. Um, I'm not saying it's going to win, but... Yeah, this... If you're interested in just going for the king, this would be a way to, like, try to do that. Um, again, it depends what black plays, but... Um, but yeah, if you're playing the ready, which is a perfectly good system in its own right, and leads to lots of interesting positions, um, you just have to be a bit patient with it, I think. Um. Oh, my shoving F5 threw you off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty great, isn't it? Nobody suspects f5, but here, like, the you have only... This is a good move, because it threatens to push e4, um, which is why I play f5. But also, this kind of transposes to stonewall ideas. So, um, yeah, this would definitely throw you off. I'm trying to think, is there a move order by which you could have done this faster? Like, here, I guess you could just play it immediately, right? Now that you've castled, this should be possible to play. Um, I don't think it's going to lead anywhere, but it's still playable. And I guess you could play d5, and we trade here, and, like, they still have a symmetrical pawn structure. And then I offer a queen trade, and we trade the queens, and we trade the knights. And I don't know, like, we could do stuff like this. Um, so move ordering wise, that probably would have made more sense. And in hindsight, I probably should have put my bishop here instead, anticipating this and saving a tempo. And I don't know how I play this, but like I could do something like this. And it'll be fine, I guess. Um, Yeah, yeah, Blitz is a pretty brutal format. Yeah, thanks for the game.